How bad is it to shift without clutching? No, it's fine. Okay. The only thing your transmission needs to shift is different RPM speeds. But when you're going down, you just hover over it and... Oh, shit. All right, all right. You know? And yeah. it, it's totally fine. Do what you gotta do. Ah, I dropped it way too hard. All right, we're doing a test review of the brand new uh, 2000 whatever. <laughs> the 2000 Gucci R6. Oh, I wish I could afford a new bike. This feels good. <laughs> <laughs> Let me turn around. I want to see you do a wooly. All right. Hey, that's pretty good. <laughs> that feeling never goes away, man. All right, what's up, Pack? Today we're doing five ways you're killing your bike. I'm out here with Pallone. He's now into life logging, which is pretty badass. Hopefully I don't crash because I'm not very good anymore. Actually, I never was really good. <laughs> I was about to say you never were good. I was never good at this. Okay, so number one way you're killing your bike is you're using the wrong oil. Now, I admit to doing this, sadly, but I didn't realize there's a difference between car oil and motorcycle oil. When you go to get oil, you think you just need the weight. You need the first weight, the, so let's do 10 W30. The 10 is how the oil will react to uh, cold temperatures. The W stands for winter. And the 40 or the 30 is how oil reacts when it heats up. I always thought the W stood for like weight. Nah, uh, it stands for winter and it's a, uh it's got an additive in there, which is the big thing with oils. That's a whole difference between car oil and bike oils. It has different additives to protect your engine. All right, so guys, you need to put motorcycle oil in motorcycles. Why? If you just think about it, it's super simple. Cars have separate transmissions from their engine block. The only car oil, which is a diesel oil that you can really use is Rotella. And the way you can tell is it has a JASO rating, which is the Japanese rating for friction, and it works with wet clutches. Yeah, the JASO rating is what measures friction in the oil. And basically Rotella is the only one that uh, I've ever found that can be put in a bike. If, if your bike can run their weights, I don't remember, they have like three or two or three different weights. So they have specific weights? Yeah, so you need to run what your bike needs to run. So my bike would run, uh, it runs 1040. I got 1030 in it now, but you know, whatever. MA is lower friction, higher, so it'll be more slippery on your clutch. Your clutch will slip more, anything lower than M1. And it goes up to M2, which is more sticky, so you'll have more friction, basically. Car oil is bad for your transmission because the gear teeth are like, think of it as like strong nutcrackers. Right. When they slam together, it separates the, the oil molecules, and it's basically metal on metal. Okay. So that's the main reason you don't want to use car oils in your bikes, guys. Right. guys number two on uh, the ways you're killing your bike list is your air filter now there's a lot of air filters you can get aftermarket ones that are better and stuff but basically there's three types of air filters there's paper there's foam which is on found on most dirt bikes and there's gauze now the main thing you're doing wrong is you're washing your paper air filter paper air filters must be kept dry now when you take your paper air filter out and you're like ah oh, it's covered in dirt i don't want to buy a new one because it's fucking expensive which they kind of are and you wash it, basically, it's like when you take, um, it's like when you take toilet paper, get it wet and sling it to the top of a roof and it sticks. The paper doesn't let air through anymore. Now, on the other hand, if you have a gauze or a foam type of filter, like some from K&N and stuff, the aftermarkets, they have to be oiled. And the reason they have to be oiled is because the oil sits on top of the foam and grabs, uh, dirt particles and stuff that fly through and lets the air pass through. So if you use no oil and say, hey, I want to get more air into my, my bike, yeah. yeah, you're getting more air, but you're also pulling in dirt. So you get dust in your cylinder and it sticks to the oil on the side of the wall in the cross hatching and basically it acts as sandpaper because it gets stuck there, it can't get out. Every time your piston goes up and down, the ring scratch it and it wears into your cylinder more and more. So you need to have good air filters, guys. Don't just pull it out. The third way you are 
are killing your bike is you're not adjusting your throttle and clutch cables correctly. You well, know, everyone likes their cable tighter and you know, you want it to be real stiff. But basically this causes extra wear on your cable when you pull it and doesn't allow for the free play like when you turn. When you have too tight of a cable, especially a throttle cable, it can cause your bike to accelerate when you take a sharp turn, like Scarlett did that. If you turn too sharp to the left or to the right, sometimes it'll pull on your cable and it'll accelerate you, which is dangerous. The free play is uh, how much wobble it has before it engages. There's a certain uh, factory specification for each bike. It causes less wear on your, uh, well, it causes uh, no clutch drag or clutch slip. Clutch, clutch slip is obviously when it slips and it doesn't engage fully, and clutch drag is when it doesn't disengage. So if it's too loose, you'll have clutch drag. So you want to make sure your levers and stuff are adjusted properly to... to extend the life of your parts. People don't lose their chains. If you have a chain driven bike, what a lot of people do is use grease. Now grease is great for oiling it. Like it'll keep it really good. But the main thing is that it picks up stuff. Like you go off road once, or you go on a long trip, it's gonna pick up sticks and rocks and little squirrels and all kinds of shit are gonna get stuck up on your chain. And that acts as sandpaper on the uh, O-rings and shit. And it'll, it'll cut the life of your chain pretty short. So you wanna use a wax kind of like lube. And basically it sprays on wet and then the wax dries and it kind of sticks to the chain and it doesn't pick up dirt and stuff and it still lubricates. It's like, it's, um, it's called a dry lube. I don't think I can get up on the tank of this one. Ugh. It's a little too, a little sketch. <laughs> Hang on, I gotta focus. <laughs> I'm going too slow, I believe. Oh, we did it. Oh, you did Oh, we did it. <laughs> I'm gonna fucking die. <laughs> okay, so uh, number five, right? Yeah. All right, the number five way you're killing your bike is you're doing fucking race starts, guys. You think you're badass fucking taking off and beating fucking Priuses and shit? Well, you're killing second gear. So basically what happens is, how do you do a race start, guys? You click it down into first, you rev the thing up, and then you drop the clutch. Now, yeah, the first... The first gear gets a little wear, but most of the wear is when you shift into second gear at high RPM. Ugh. Uh, you gotta pull it up a little bit higher, man. Yeah, it's not quite balanced there. Hmm, my tank leaks, there's a lot of gas coming out. <laughs> No, nah, I don't need all the bolts. So you rev your engine, you drop the clutch. The dogs on your gear, you're on your slider gear, are already slid in, they're locked. When you want to shift into second gear, as you shift, your bike goes into a fraction of neutral and then slams into second gear and those dogs connect, connecting to the second gear. But that's where it wears out. You can break your dogs off, but that's what breaks second gear. Uh, nubs on the actual slider gears that uh, shift in your transmission to switch you to a higher or lower gear. You gonna buy my drink? Yeah. I was gonna buy your drink. <laughs> Spend too much money on me. You, you, you let me do a little bit, some little baby Willie. Do a Willie? I was like gonna get on and be like, all right, I'm gonna go hard. Nope. I'll find out in two months. I owe you like 500 bucks. I'll get like a receipt. <laughs> That's all the shit I bought you. <laughs> what are those cameras on your helmet? Yeah. Then? Yeah. Oh, cool. All right. Stop. All right. Thank, thank you. you. You're welcome. Guys. Have a great day. You too. All right. All right guys, number six is you're using your clutch too much. What do I mean by this? And now when you're learning uh, to ride, it's a good idea to leave your bike in gear at stoplights so you cannot be run over. Like if you have to move and you see a car coming up behind you or whatever, you're, you're taught to leave it in gear. But the more you pull on your clutch, the faster your clutch wears out, in, in short. Because basically, when you pull your clutch, it releases the pressure on the friction plates and the drive plates, and uh, it doesn't pull them apart. Like, they still rub constantly. All right, guys, number seven, the way you're killing your bike is using the wrong gas. This makes the, the gas resistant to... Makes, okay. Ah. You done? 
there. All right, guys, the higher your octane, the least likely it is to pre-detonate in your engine. And you do not want pre-detonation in your engine. It can cause blown pistons, cracked pistons, blown rings, all kinds of shit. So you want to use the right gas for your bike. If your bike needs... Oh, yeah. yeah, look at all that fuel. If your bike requires 91 octane or 87 octane and you're putting the low stuff in it, you're actually going to get more horsepower the lower the octane, but it's worse on your engine because it's more likely to pre-detonate. <laughs> Pretty fun. And you can introduce that into your Holy bike. shit. <laughs> Holy shit. It's because we're doing below speed limit. We're so slow. Why are we so slow? Hey, I got a sport bike. It's the Formula One of street bikes. I'm going to go ahead and just put around. You got the colder spark plugs, bro. I got to. It's warming up. That guy went around me. <laughs> what a dick. Oh. 